Hey guys, Nick from Surf Fishing in SoCal, and today I'm sure you've seen plenty of videos on it, but we're gonna be going over how to catch sand crabs and use them for bait. So the first thing you gotta do is get to your beach, and and we're here actually at low tide. I don't think there's really a, a best tide to find them. A lot of guys say high tide. If I had to pick between tides, I honestly would say a low tide is better. Um, unless it's a really high tide, then you tend to find them pretty easily. But as far as that goes, if I'm picking a time of day, sunset's the best. Uh, I think they're just everywhere come sunset. Um, but bottom line, when you hit summertime, they're gonna be everywhere and you're not gonna really have to, to look too hard. But here's a really good example of what to look for. Um, so all I've got on me, colander from the dollar store and then empty water bottle and all we're gonna do is walk along the wet sand and just scan the shoreline for for any signs of sand crabs and I'll show you what to look for guys we're scanning the wet sand here we're looking we're looking I'm not seeing anything here you're looking for little like ripples in the in the water slash wet sand it looks like right here Right here is exactly what we're looking for. So this right here is what's called a bed of sand crabs. They look like they're slightly on the smaller side. Oh no, I take that back. They look just about right. So we'll dive in here with our colander. Usually I'm using two hands, but for the sake of holding my phone, we're using one here. And then you wait for the water to come up. sift through here and just like that we've got sand crabs so peak summertime anywhere from really really late april through october you're you're gonna have no problem finding these along any beach in socal the ideal size that i like to fish i'll show you here this guy right here. Any bigger than that, it's okay, but I find this to be the optimal size. You'll get, literally anything will bite it. The big guys will take it, the little guys can fit it. Um, really just a, re a really good universal size. And, and that's as easy as it is to find sand crabs. One other note, this guy right here, you can see he's a different color than all the other ones. He's soft shell. So that's a soft shell sand crab. I'll take that out for you. And you can see here, look at even the underneath, it's just that opaque looking, almost translucent color. And I can press down on him, he's, he's a little squishy. So that's a soft one. That is gonna get hit. I mean, say, say these normal, say a normal one this size gets hit three times out of 10 casts, this one's gonna get hit maybe seven times out of 10 casts. And they just, that's just how it goes. They, all it is is a molt, freshly molted sand crab. So I'm gonna let these guys go, but that's literally all there is to it. So a little more on looking for sand crabs. So you can totally see right in front of me here. This is a bed, okay? Th that's what you're looking for. All these little disturbances in the sand. This right here, you can hopefully tell, but these are really small. So these aren't gonna be usable for bait. I mean, you can just look at how small they are. So those are all just little babies. See that again. Not so many, but yeah, all really small guys. But that's what you're looking for. The beds will look relatively the same. Um, it's just, you'll see that these are finer. And yep, actually a little too big. So that big one, 
don't ever use one that big. That's just my thought. You can go ahead and do whatever you want, but that's not gonna catch fish. The one that I just dropped, that's gonna catch fish. Those are ideal. That's your perfect size. Today, and I keep them in a water bottle. Um, those are pretty good size. And 50 is the limit. I've got about 50 there. Um, yeah. So as for cooking your sand crabs, um, obviously I keep mine in a bottle. Um, and my ideal size right about here you can kind of see that you can kind of match it to my index finger there uh, and i actually like to hook them a lot of guys go through the belly here and out the hook or out the, the shell i like to go through the shell here and out the belly just like that. And that, I do that because, now that, I know this one doesn't have row, but a lot of them, when you get bitten off, the fish tend to bite right there. And you'll see the, the butt here missing and, and the row missing. Uh, e even if they don't have row, they tend to bite there. Uh, so I like to have the hook pointed right there. So I think that increases my hookups, but I've got plenty of guys I normally fish with who, who don't do that and they don't like it, but that's how I do it. 